So cool. It's like the Fender Ball. So we reefed uh, the main and took down the Code 65. And now we have a big system in front of us. So the red line is land and the blue blob is uh, weather. Decided to move nowadays. Um, the way we decide to move is when our friends on velvet <laughs> say they're moving. They're like, ah, oh, today we're going to go to a black point, and then uh, thereafter we'll go to pharmacy. And we're like, that sounds great. We'll do the same thing you're doing. One of the hacks is to find someone who's been cruising the Bahamas for 35 years and basically do what they do. And um, the guy knows all the spots, all the places for caulk, not that we eat, eat it, but, well, I eat it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, la la. <laughs> Tastes really good. You want some stuff on? No, I'm good. <laughs> um, and all the good snorkel spots and what to do and um, basically follow them around. They've been awesome. Um, really, really helpful. They know all of the places where you can leave your trash, where to get gas, um, the best grocery stores. So that's that's the thing. When you get to a new uh, sitting area, just find somebody who's been around the block <laughs> and then copy them. Lessons learned, a lifetime of lessons learned, and we just want to fast forward the learning. So we're just going around this island here, six nautical miles down to this point, point called, uh, to this area called um, Black Point. Yeah, just let you know about that. Look at those waters, looks fabulous. Um, mixed feelings because sure discovering a new area, but I feel that we have also certain things to keep, that we need to do on the boat. Uh, for example, our engine fan on the starboard side is uh, not working, but uh, I just want to test the fan I've had, I took it apart, I need to take the time to do this, but we want to mix it up with meeting with uh, people, discovering the area, and then moving. So it's a fine balance to strike. 
we haven't quite figured out how to manage our time in general and uh, we need to definitely figure that out um, but we are excited to meet new people and everybody's been so friendly and amazing and everything we you know really love about the cruising community uh, it's been it's been great people stopping by and saying hello so we love that part we're at black point and we're interested to see what's here quite a few diggies here and then we have some sharks <laughs> so right below a diggy little shark. We're headed to a little party for cruisers. Here hey. you go. Yes. So how do I get up there? Now we're going to step in <laughs> into the other dinghies. We're going to play like musical chairs or something. Oh, you're going. West that beach party. It's pretty cool. It was uh, a lot of local people mixed with cruisers, yeah. and um, it was really cool. They had like a DJ and um, a purse weaving contest or a what is this straw? Pretty impressive. Weaving, yeah. yeah. And um, lots of really cool barbecue. It'd be awesome if we ate barbecue. <laughs> it looked really good. Um, yeah. So it was really fun. So there we go. Now we have our flags up and our boat can look a little more joyful. The color of this water is beautiful. And today, we're gonna move and we're gonna go to Farmer's Key. Made you fix the Bahamian flag a little sad. Oh, the Bahamian flag's sad now. Yeah, what we like about the Bahamas is you check in once and you hop around from island to island or from key to key, as they say versus the Caribbean, you have to check in and check out every time you enter a new island because even if you have Guadeloupe and Martinique, which are French, um, you still have to check in and out. So that's really nice for sure. There it goes. We are on the move. We left from this anchorage, Black Point. Uh, we need to go southeast and we're going to go to Farmer's Key and we'll enter from the south side. Uh, we're going to take one long tack outside all the way here and then we'll take another tack to go to Farmer's Key. Today is uh, full main, full genoa. Dagger board down, we're sailing in deeper waters so that's safe. Um, well, full Genoa, we're not like super tight, um, just kind of keeping everything moving and, and loose. Those are like nice upwind conditions, flat water, clear water. Uh, sailing in a swimming pool is a lot of fun. You have to get used to it because of the depth. But we have uh, 2.6 meters under our rudder. Um, we don't have a full dagger board, just trying to be uh, a little safe. But I think there needs to be another word for champagne sailing because those are definitely the champagne sailing conditions. 10, 12 knots, flat water. But when you're doing champagne sailing in a swimming pool, with two, three meters of depth and with those colors of blues and greens there has to be another word for champagne sailing because that's another degree of champagne sailing you get that feeling of gliding over the water but in this case you're literally in a swimming pool 
Okay, yet another big header, so we tacked on it. Problem is the wind is uh, quite shifty. It goes, um, we have like 40 degrees. Good morning. Waking up early this morning. We're leaving uh, this beautiful key, uh, little farmers, uh, earlier than we wanted to, but um, we have a deadline to be in Georgetown by Saturday at the latest, and you have to pick the weather you get. So we have decided to leave. Holly is super excited about this, yes? I wouldn't say that. She said she would not say that. Uh, we're looking at the same uh, weather forecast, but um, um, Holly sees things uh, differently. So let me try to explain and not let her explain. Uh, so, if we uh, zoom out, we have this low pressure here. So we have this cold front here and we are south of it. But what I see is we have this wind right now that is coming from southwest. But as the day is going to go by, uh, we're going to get this wind rotation uh, from west uh, northwest, north, so that's good for us. We should have flat water beginning and then we should have the wind more or less behind us. So that's not every day um, that you get this type of wind to go um, southeast. And it's going to be some rain today, um, but the further southeast we're going to go, the better it's going to be. So the earlier we leave, uh, it's better for a couple of reasons we might escape the worst of it. Um, and we want to arrive in Georgetown also with plenty of time to spare. Let's see what makes sense to Holly. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me to leave before a storm's coming through when everybody else is battening down. So it's counterintuitive to me and uh, Stefan has all his logic about it and it has nothing to do with logic. It has to do with me, just how I'm feeling. And um, I think that's the difference with couples. And he's more risk tolerant and I'm more risk adverse. So I don't want to be caught in a situation with an unpredictable weather system. It's as simple as that. Here you go. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see later today. But the, the models all are in agreement. So that's good. And also what I'm looking at is over the next few days, um, so starting tomorrow, we'll have more of a northeast wind. And as you're going southeast, that's going to be upwind. Oh, motors are starting. Ali is uh, ready to go. So I better <laughs> turn it off. We'll, the story will be told during the day. So this is the cut. And uh, you can see a little bit of current and it's uh, a little narrow for my taste. We made the cut, phase two. Phase one was uh, raising anchor, phase two is going through the cut. Bye Stefan bye. always has his phases for things, <laughs> like there's phases to every maneuver, which actually is helpful, I like it, because it keeps me focused. Um, phase three, it's going to George now. Yeah. Look at that flat water. And we have flat water, so far. Yes, um, all the way, all the day. So bright and sunny here, and uh, dark and gloomy there, which is where the weather's coming from. So, we'll see. Sails are up, sun is up. We haven't fully trimmed the sails yet. Sure is pretty. Awen, looking forward to sailing a little bit today. 
So I want to talk a little bit about why I think intuition matters. I know for very logical, She's loving it. Um, engineering types, only the data matters. And I've just learned over the years that my intuition is 99.9% .9 of the time right. <laughs> hey, let me, let me talk, let me talk. And whenever I go against my intuition, um, number one, it causes me a lot of stress. And number two, uh, it usually doesn't turn out. So um, I've just learned to trust it over the years. And I think in general, women are very in touch with their intuition. And I've read a lot about brain science. It's just something I'm interested in. And what they say is your conscious mind processes a certain amount of information and your unconscious mind processes everything else. And it runs in the background of your brain. And um, sometimes your intuition or your sixth sense is actually data that's being processed somewhere that gives you a bad feeling that um, you should pay attention to. It's just from our survival, it's from our evolution. But it can't tell you, it can't explain to you why. So um, I think it's important to be in touch with your intuition, even if the facts don't line up. I think it's a factor. So I think there's a lot of people probably watching um, who are very logic based, who'd be like, oh, you know, she has a lot of fear. And it's, it's not the fear, it's um, I'm trying to also balance being in touch with something that I value that's helped me in my life um, stay out of bad situations and many bad situations actually. I think that's the, that's the friction a little bit when you have someone on board who is very analytical, logical, looking at the data and you have someone who um, taking also into account some information that is not on any weather chart or any data anywhere. So um, I think that's a natural tension on a boat actually. So I'd love to hear what you guys think, especially the couples. Uh, how do you deal with that and um, how do you work through it? I 100% want Stefan to be right every time. I don't want to be, I, I don't necessarily want to be right. Uh, so I think it's just going to take time to get, you know, those right times under, under my belt a little bit to, to trust that. And uh, it's a process for sure. I think the other thing is I don't entirely trust the weather forecast. And I know it's based on a lot of models and it's the best data we're going to get. But I think you always have to err on the side of being conservative when you see bad weather patterns. And um, I think if you're strictly looking at the data and looking at very fine specifics about you know, when the wind angle is going to change at a specific time, I've never seen it be perfect. So I think I tend to, that's what I mean about risk tolerance is it, it's more that I, I put in a cushion, you know, if it says the wind's going to be 25, I'm going to assume it's going to be 30. And um, yeah, that's also something I would like to hear people's c comments on is, you know, just the generally, how do you take the weather information, look at all the models, and then do you add a buffer or do you kind of strictly stay, or do you strictly stay with what the weather tells you? Um, and we're just, you know, we're just sort of getting back into it after being off the water for 18 months and uh, looking at much more weather information. And a lot of weather data can be also very overwhelming. So interested in your comments on that. As expected, the wind is um, uh, going right. We know it's going to continue to, uh, to veer and um, as the wind will fill in and will continue to rotate from west to northwest to north, 
then we'll hopefully be able to carry um, this, uh, this cell. We need a cell change. We went from the Genoa to the Code 65. Uh, truly, we should be rigging the uh, A2 right now, uh, based on us wanting to sail away from the coast and the wind being very light. But we're trying to buy some time. We expect uh, two things, uh, rotation of the wind, um, uh, veering, and also uh, increase in wind. So we're hoping the Cut 65 is going to be uh, the right sail for when this happens. They're going towards that weather. No, thank you. <laughs> we're going towards that weather. Much better. Although um, that cold front is going to come south quite a bit. We'll see who is right. So far I'm liking what I see. So far I'm being right. It was a good window. <laughs> we'll see. We'll have uh, the camera turned on after we anchor and get uh, uh, to check on Holly's intuition, see if she was right. Moving along, put 65. Perfect sail. Um, it's just the boat feels good, and we're just uh, trying to keep that uh, those dark clouds way behind us. So the this is storm. This is coastline, and uh, we can see things changing. In theory, it should stay on that side. Got the code 65 up. And then we have the furling line in place in case we have to furl it quickly. We can. And you can hear thunder. I really don't like how that looks. So. The tough part is, the faster we go, the better, because we're going away from it. Um, so we don't necessarily want to reef yet. So we reefed uh, the main and took down the code 65 and now we have a big system in front of us. So the red line is land and the blue blob is uh, weather. Just like that the radar cleared up so the outside circle is six miles away which is pretty much um, how far we are from the northern entrance of uh, Georgetown, I believe. I'll have to check that. Um, boss, what's the status? We really threaded through the storm systems, and that was like really lucky. <laughs> so no luck. It was just it was lucky. The skills. It was lucky. Uh, we found out that uh, at our anchorage, uh, a monohull dragged and has landed on the beach because they've had squalls so you yeah you just have to make the best decision for yourself there is uh, yeah i don't know it's uh, you stay you might be safe you stay you might run aground and here we're exposed but so far we've had a few sail changes uh, down to one reef two reefs on the main more because we were seeing a lot of stuff on the radar we are anchored, we're in Georgetown, mission accomplished. What are the, <laughs> what are your first uh, It's uh, like thoughts? everything with you, like you just get really lucky. The problem with Stefan is like if he wants to go to say, see a movie and the place is completely crowded, it's always crowded and I'm like, let's leave early, let's make sure we get a parking spot, let's make sure, you know, we get good seats or whatever. 
he'd go, no, no, I'd wait till the last minute, and then it'd show up, and of course, there would be spots open and, you know, tickets available. Um, but if I were to go with anybody else, it would be, like, not that way. So um, you just got really lucky. You get really lucky. We threaded right through all of the big um, systems. It, the system was huge. It took up the whole radar, and somehow we were able to, like, squeak through. So it's good. I mean, I'm glad you're lucky. Maybe win the lotto now. <laughs> Lack of skills. <laughs> How about your intuition here? Well, my intuition was right. Like, yeah, yeah it was. It was um, not predictable. You know, like we kind of knew some stuff was going to be there, but then we turned around and suddenly there was. We were looking at this whole system behind us, and then suddenly there was a whole system in front of us. It was huge. It took up the whole screen on the radar. We are set for the next couple of days. We have our friends Taco Cat right in front of us. So looking forward to catching up with them. And anyway, you make the best decisions you can make with the uh, data you have and your skills and your boat and your crew. And then you stick to it and then you deliver. Yes? Yeah.